One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. S- seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Knockout. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the NHL Podcast. This is your host, Crafts Dwarf, here with my co-host, Matt, who is finally getting to the old school block that's been advertised for like a year now, I think. I feel like I remember that we had this block, uh, like ever since we started the NEN show, like we were thinking like, oh, what can we do for the future? Yeah, and I remember right. like new school and old school coming up and I was like, oh, we'll get to read some classics eventually. And uh, yeah, it took a while, but we're there. Finally reading classics, finally reading Ashito no Joe. Um, which I'll start off by saying, these are the worst scans we've had to read on the Nen Show so far. One hundred percent. Like even at least with manga stream, I could it understand. It was in like, le- like right yeah. to left. <laughs> oh yeah, it was right to left, and like I don't know, there was a lot of like cursing, but otherwise, like the language, it didn't seem. Some of the language here, is, uh, some of it's mistranslated. Some of it seems like it's just in like broken yeah. English. Um, yeah, and then, like, the, the Naruto and Yu Hakusho official translations had issues, but, the, yeah, this is the first time we've read a fan translation since the ending of Bleach, basically. Um, and it shows. So I will say that in the next reading, um, a different scan group takes over, and from then on out, the scans are great. The translation is great. Uh, we're just not there yet. So. Well, now I have a good excuse to go and watch the anime, because at least I would hope that... Uh, there's a good fan translation of Ashtana Joe, or if there's an official one. I don't know if it's officially I licensed. Know, I, I think the second season is on, or was on Crunchyroll officially translated, but I don't remember if the first one was. Um, I would hope there's an official translation somewhere, but, you know, uh, who knows. Uh, so it's, it's always like a gamble with older stuff. Like, you can't read Ashtana Joe or Fist of the North Star, like, legally in English, for you know, like, even though they're super, like, important and stuff. So, you know, very sad. Um... So anyway, as usual, um, you know, new series, we're going to go, um, you know, we're not going to talk about comments, but if you leave your comment, we will hopefully talk about it next time if, you know, we find it interesting enough. Um, and beyond that, we like to talk about our personal histories and spoilers, which in this case, we won't be no spoilers um, beyond what we've read, even the ones that everyone knows. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but um see, so yeah, you don't have a particular personal history with Joe? Yeah, no, this is my first time like actually get it. The only thing I know about Joe is like uh Caribou Coon references his al- it a lot as like one of his favorites. So it's like it's been one of those shows that has like been on my backlog for a long time. Um but I don't know anything about it. Yeah, I'm I'm interested in watching it because I've heard it adds a lot of stuff that's not in the manga and as for me, this is my third time reading the manga. Um, it's always kind of hovered around being a favorite, and I think I've said it's a favorite before, but then I kind of flip flop. Like, is it? I, I don't because it is. It is super good. But rereading this opening part, it's like, yeah, this is probably some of the weaker stuff. Because I actually dropped it. I think maybe not for a, lo- a while, but I definitely like. But it's not. They're not boxing yet. <laughs> <laughs> like it was weird. It was. It, it, yeah, I thought it was a weird start, and of course, yeah, the scans aren't good. Um, I might have just not going, not understood what was going on because I was reading it the wrong direction. Because like the first volume or so is just read from left to right <laughs> for whatever. Did they flip it back? Is it? Did they? Where did they scan these from? I don't. <laughs> yeah, it, it's bad. Um, but it's not even going to be the worst. We're reading this block because I've seen some of the Kanikamon scans um, for the oh, earlier stuff. No, <laughs> they're really bad. Math was they're really bad. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, so yeah, I know everything, you know, this, like I said, this is my third time going through. I still want to watch anime because it's got original stuff, but uh, yeah, let's uh, get into it. So we start off in a poor district of Tokyo, um, introduced to uh, Joe, the, the the boy himself, and like he kind of immediately gets into trouble, you know, because he's very just lot loud, um, and yeah, there's like the kids who end up becoming recurring characters, um, and of course, uh, Dompe. Tange, Tange, or, um, see, I haven't said some of these names out loud, so I'm like, wait, how do I pronounce them correctly? Yeah, I think it is Tompe Tange. I just usually just call him Tange. Um, you know, and after the fight, he's like, oh, you're, you'll be, a, you could be a great boxer. Everyone can, well, because, and, uh, like, one thing, he says, like, yeah, everyone can be a boxer, and that actually comes into play later with Aoyama, who is very unfit to be a boxer, you know, because he's small and not very strong, but, you know, he finds a way to turn him into someone who can fight and win. Um, but of course, Joe's much more naturally gifted, um, as we see. 
Um, but yeah, like, he, he starts getting in fights with people immediately, but then, like, when some actual, like, thugs come around, he kind of, like, he steps in. Like, he doesn't, like... Like, he, he'll he beat up on uh, Tange himself, but then when other people do it, he's, like, you know, takes offense. Or, well, mostly, like, you know, Tange was getting on him first, and then, he, you know, it got e- escalated. But, you know, he's still kind of, like, he, he you know, he's a, a jackass with uh, something of a heart in there, you know, somewhere. yeah. Um, and he definitely has his moments of, like, genuine goodwill thing, but, you know, he's just, like, like, I, we, see, like, you know, it's called Tomorrow's Joe, and, you know, so a big thing is, like, looking towards the tomorrow, and so, like, you know, we don't get a lot, of, like, we get some of Tange's backstory, like, that's, like, a flashback, and one of the only ones that I can remember, honestly, um, but, and, you know, we, we hear about, a bit about Joe's history, he was an orphan, he ran away, um, and that's it. But we don't, you know, we don't see any of it because, you know, he it's the focus is on the tomorrow rather than, you know, where he came from. But yeah, he beats up the thugs. Um, Tange's still trying to get him to uh, get into boxing. See, I feel like I had more to say after, like, uh, reading it. But now I'm like, uh... But yeah, I guess the next interesting part is, like, there. yeah, there's been an encounter at the end and then um, more fights. Oh, that's right. The, oh, yeah, this, okay, the, the, this part is actually kind of uh, noteworthy because, um... The thugs come back, and uh, Don uh, Tompe or uh, I'm, I'm mixing his name. Uh, <laughs> Tange <laughs> Tange uh, like uh, protects Joe by knocking him down and covering him so that the thugs can't get to him. And I don't know. That just made me think of like later on, especially when he like he was being interrogated by the police. They like ask him, "Oh, what do you think of parents?" And you know, like or like you know, kind of like psychoanalyzing him. And when he says kind, when he asks about kindness, he thinks of he thinks of Tange, like. Um, and so, you know, and, and I guess this moment kind of comes into play with that, um, especially with like, you know, the ending of this stretch of chapters um, when he gets out of juvie and gets into the uh, back home base or the closest thing he has to a home, basically. But uh, I also thought it was kind of interesting the way that, you know, it's not like, oh, let's run from these people. It's like, no, we will stand our ground and I will just, you know, I, like Tom Pei uses himself or now I'm mixing up the names. <laughs> uh, Dompe uses himself as a as a shield, um, so like they don't, you know, they don't back down from these people or like retreat. Uh, they, you know, he just gets beaten up. Yeah. Um. That right. That's hmm, that's interesting. I feel like I have something interesting to add onto that, but I can't think of. Um, it's also one of those things like you see it in the moment, and it's like, well, that's kind of silly. Like, why why did he do that? Why didn't they just leave? <laughs> but like, yeah. On but a... then if they they run again, it kind of avoids conflict. Where if they stand their ground they kind of you know they they have it's you know they have it ends in one way or another um and of course with the police around it's not like the thugs can just you know so um you know there there's uh, yeah it, it's worth considering um but anyway uh, now we get the uh, like i said the uh the the tange flashback where um you know he lost his eye boxing himself so he just you know took to training other boxers and like his, his the boxer he was training before was um, I guess how I would describe it he's, he's kind of a, like afraid of the tomorrow he's like not willing to try and hurt himself um, you know even if he might have the chance of winning and so, so he doesn't get along with Tange who wants him to throw himself into it basically um, though you know there's also kind of a fair like thing here where like you know um, Cause yeah, he would could. It's boxing is like like one of the things that's really impressed on later is how like dangerous boxing kind of is. Like I'm not sure if it's impressed in it totally. Like um, I don't know. We'll talk about it. But like <sighs> boxing, just like, yeah, it, you're you're punching. People are just getting hit in the head like constantly for you know years of their life lives basically. So you know there's injuries and there's things to consider like that. Um, and it definitely goes into that later. But. Um, but yeah, I guess this the flashback does establish at least the idea. Um, and after that failure, Tange sort of floated around, and now he's here where he found Joe, his potential next star. So, not that Joe was listening. <laughs> so anyway, Joe does kind of get into boxing, but not for the boxing itself. He's more interested in like get, just getting money. You know, he's not because like like we see with the 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 juvenile detention center is like boxing is kind of used in it's mostly used in the series as a sort of like way to go you know self-improvement basically yeah and it's given as this kind of answer to these kind of juvenile delinquents basically but in this instance joe's not using it that way he doesn't care about becoming better at anything he's more interested in just like the money and what he can use with that money 
Because, yeah, once uh, Tanke leaves, he just takes the kids and... <laughs> Joe's like like he's a he's a slimy little shit but he's smart like um cuz yeah he he does manage to earn some money and like the scheme he he does these fucking cra- st- stupid schemes and yeah it all comes tumbling down but at the same time I'm like you're a sly little shit <laughs> um but yeah, after that uh, fails, he sort of takes the kids to a little hideout where he he tries to, to well he explains what he wants to do and there's a couple instances later where, like, he definitely sort of, like, you know, he grew up poor, and he seems to have, like, a, a notable disdain of, like, rich people. Like, you see it a lot with Yoko. Yeah. Later. Um, And so, like, here he's like, well, I'm going to get this money, and I'm going to use this money better than those rich people, because, yeah, I'll just build a hospital and a park. And, yeah, like, it, it just seems so, like, simple. Like, he, he's got legitimately good, like, motive. Um, and you know, he, he wants to do something positive for this community. Like they just walked into basically and sees, wow, there's a lot of like poor people and, and, you know, poverty here. And he's just like, I want to make it like, yeah, on some level he wants to make it better, but his, his method isn't necessarily like, you know, again, like actually improving. So he's using like underhanded illegal means and, you know, schemes and, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, fraud. Like, like he, he brings in the news reporters and he's like, we're all orphans. Like he makes up a bullshit story and get some attention and they get a, even get a big donation from yoko and yeah so again it's like good he, he's got good intentions but because of the methodology he's using um it's it all comes tumbling down and yeah it's also kind of interesting like how it's presented because we don't like see like we, we we hear about it and that like we see it from tange's perspective like yeah we're like yeah they got arrested and uh for all the fraud like we just see the journalist thing and then it switches to tange and he's sort of like um, like he goes into the police station and all the police have the shit beaten out of him by Joe. Um, and then, uh, Tange and Joe get into a bit of a fight and uh, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of brutal, especially cause Tange is an old dude. Like he's getting the shit bit kicked out of him, but, um, yeah, but he, he, he does, uh, put up a fight against Joe too. Uh, did I have anything to write it? Uh, and yeah, well, like, cause like Tange's even in tears at times. Like he wants what's best for Joe, but, um, you know, since like Joe's potentially ruining his future even worse by like going like you know causing so much trouble, and so like uh you know, so it's just like yeah, a flawed person in a flawed system, and it's, it's uh you know yeah it doesn't work out. I definitely thought um it was interesting that uh like b- before like um. We kind of get to see like a little bit of improvement on um, on on Dompe's part because like he like he starts off initially he's like the drunk old man and Joe just kind of beats he just kind of beats him up and there's not really much uh, there's not really mm-hmm. much resistance on his end but then like late like here um, you know he's able to kind of take Joe down with his you know like he he had that little brief. Uh, section where he like he had a job and he was like really he was really busting his ass to try to like get uh you know trying to like do this stuff for joe and so like he you know he ends up uh kind of like i don't know if it was necessarily like getting back in shape or whatever but like him doing all these things he kind of i don't know like he gets over being a drunk at least so it seems like he kind of improves himself and kind of gets a little more back to he's like oh yeah he really is like uh you know an xboxer yeah, he's he's striving more for a tomorrow rather than just kind of living in the moment. Like Joe kind of Joe inspires him to like, you know, he sees this talent in this kid and he wants to, you know, help him. And so like that that drives him to yeah, get a job, quit alcohol like and as a result like yeah, he's I, I didn't think about that cuz before he was getting his ass beat by Joe cuz he wasn't he was just a drunk. He was just getting now but now he's stronger like in spirit and you know and that sort of fed into like him being able to defeat Joe now. Yeah. Um, like yeah, I didn't. I didn't think about it like that. Um, Cause yeah, he does. Yeah, pick himself up and uh, he's yeah, move again. So, but anyway, now Joe's in a, a rebuild, or he's gonna be sent to the juvenile um, detention center. But now he's in a just a rehab center just for temporarily. Um, and you kind of get a little bit of it here, but because uh, I don't. Um, well, this one I'm less. Uh, you know, because there's other times he's just kind of like curled up like that, but. Um, Especially when um, he leaves this place and he gets thrown, like thrown into the car and he's like crying and stuff. Like he's very like, la- like you know, when he's in public and with people, he's very loud and showy. Um, but when he's in, you know, alone, 
he kind of, you know, like he doesn't, you know, he, he, he's more vulnerable, I suppose. Like he, he hides that vulnerability outside of it just by, with that, his demeanor and the way he acts and fights and stuff. And like, like, again, the moment that really sticks out to me is when, um, he's being sent to the, the juvenile detention after the trial and he gets thrown into the van and he's like crying. But then once he knows that Nishi's there, he stops and, you know, he, he I wasn't crying, you know, like, yeah. um, you know, he, he can't show any weakness. And I guess, you know, um, that, that does really show like the kind of like environment he was probably brought up in. Um, so, and like why he, you know, like it, it, why he is this way, basically. Cause, um, I just, you know, it's a good character uh thing i like um um and yeah i guess he also has a thing with authority like because you know which you know is very clear with the police and stuff but even with uh donpe is like like he gets the lesson of the boxing lesson he starts like following it just because he has nothing else at this point and it, and then like he's like wow that's the most satisfying punch i've ever thrown but then he's also like wait shit i don't want to no i don't you know um i just did what he wanted me to do like he just he hates authority so much that he you know in, in any sense he doesn't like being you know, told what to do, basically. So he kind of rejects that on some level, even though, like, he, he does benefit in this case, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, actually, this is uh, interesting. Uh, so, yeah, you're, uh, yeah, to, I guess I was um, right about the... Because, yeah, when he when we first see him in this little detention cell, he was, like, curled up into a ball. But when the cop comes in, he, like, flopped onto the bed. Well, at first he flopped on the bed out of uh, anger because he's uh, bitching about Dante. But then once the cop comes in, he's like, he's like, oh, he's got like his arm, arms behind his head. He's got like one like, like he looks really relaxed and stuff. So he's again like kind of like he's putting on a different um, face than he really has. So just another point to that. And yeah, he gets into the um, little the psychoanalysis by the the the, the dude. Um, all I really had to say about the scene was what I said earlier with how he like, yeah, he's actually re- gotten kindness from Dante, which he's never you know. Um, like when he when uh, like he, he he talks about lo- like he he mockingly talks about love and family and all the other things that he's asked about but um with Dompe it does mention you know or with kindness he does mention you know a person that you know so like he does it in a mocking way so that the guy doesn't get anything out of it but the fact that we the audience like that's who we think so you know um mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, and there's also the line where he's like, um, oh, Yabuki Joe, he's just a crazy, ruthless, um, egotistic. He's like a desert, like, not a single blade of grass grows there. Like, he doesn't see any potential in Joe as, like, a human being, basically. So he's just going to throw him into, you know, rehabilitation, you know, detention center, where um, Dante has very much seen something in Joe, even if it's, you know, boxing. But, um, yeah. So, but yeah, we'll see how that uh, shakes out later. Um, and it's it's always interesting seeing Nishi at the start because he looks so different even in just a few volumes when he's more positive. Like he looks just you know he, when he's drawn as a you know antagonist, he just looks more like like his eyes are smaller. I think in particular, um, and his face is less round, maybe, or it's like it's he's definitely drawn differently. So, um. Because he's basically, like, yeah, th- I guess it's a spoiler, but we, we see it at the end, but he's basically, like, a recurring, like, major character, um, you know, so. Yeah, there's a lot with this that I can definitely see, um, you know, uh, you know, and again, like, as far as, like, influences go, I'm sure, you know, obviously there was stuff written before Joe, um, but as far as, like, what Ashtano Joe kind of, like, represents for these sort of, like, action stories kind of, like, going forward, um, well, I don't know. Maybe I'm projecting a little too much, but I definitely see like, oh, here's like the, um, the, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, the best friend character who is like the, the motivational support. Mm-hmm. He's there. He'll stick by the protagonist. Um, yeah, there's um, a little bit of like a youthful anti-authoritism, you know? Um, it's also got kind you... of like the, um, maybe not talk no jutsu, but you know how like you take the, the someone who's formerly an antagonist and then they become you know, part of the protagonist yeah, oh, the, team. Yeah, the, that's right. The antagonist becoming friends. Right. That's true. So, so yeah, like, like yeah, I'm not, again, this is actually one of the oldest manga I've read, so I'm not going to say, like, oh, Ashtano Joe invented these tropes, you know, but, like, we're going to be conscious of that, of course. But, like, they were, they, they're they here this early, you know? Um, and I'll definitely, like, because, like, I'm also watching, or I'm currently watching Hajime no Ippo, the author of which, like, like here's basically some of my, um, like, Ashtano Joe's direct influence. Um it was part, like Ringni Kakuro was a boxing manga done by the guy who did Saint Seiya, and Ashinojo was an influence of that. And Ringni Kakuro kind of brought the kind of like hyper realism 
the exaggerated realism to shonen and stuff and um so that you know there's one chain um there's a scene later i want to bring up because there's a scene in episode one of gurn the gone um that that's uh, and in general kamina is kind of like a big um uh joe like he's a reference to joe as a character in a sense like there's st- they're still pretty different um but like there's some definitely de- definitely intentional like um inspiration being drawn th- from there um yeah i know very particular see- there's like one <laughs> shot in particular which is very yeah and- if you recognize the shot from being from ashtana joe in grand lagan then you you know exactly what we're talking about and that's also <laughs> a commonly referenced one in general um yeah so um but also, like, yeah, going through Hajime no Ippo, there's also a lot of Joe references in Ippo. Like, there's a character named Sendo who, he, he's the Joe reference character. Like, he literally has a bunch of kids in his hometown. Like, that, I, I think maybe all of them, but definitely a couple of them have just straight up, they're just, like, the designs of these kids from Joe, but in the author, in Morikawa's art style, basically. Um, and then there's, like, uh, there's another thing that happens later involving, like, a punch stopping just short while the bell rings. And that's, like, that's a Joe reference that we haven't <laughs> seen yet. So it's like, you know, like reading Joe is really helpful if you go into a lot of sports or shonen series because you're going to see what you saw in Joe in a lot of other places, too, because it is this like, you know, super important and influential anime or manga series and anime, I guess. Well, because, yeah, the anime got Megalobox just a couple years ago. It's like a 50th anniversary. So, yeah, um, yeah. Even just like as an anime, um, like Osamu Dezaki, like a lot of his tendencies show up everywhere, like the triple pan, the uh, postcard memories, like and a lot of that, you know, is present, at least from what I've heard, a lot of it is present in in Joe. Um, So definitely mm -hmm, like as far as that's those sort of like artistic flares carrying through to other action series or um i guess other anime sports series or yeah. yeah just anime in general it's definitely okay because yeah i don't have a lot of perspective on the anime but you've probably like watched some videos or heard some things apparently right or from the sounds of it or i'll just on the director at least yeah yeah uh again like caribou coon did like a whole 12 days of dezaki kind of going through different techniques mm, of his and okay you know gotcha. stuff like that um yeah so like in general like it, you know it, it's it, yeah, it's one like, of those things that like it feels like it's so pervasive that like um you know recognizing it as specifically a joe reference or a um you know like it almost feels like there's so much that could be like it's that uh prevalent like that it could be referenced that it's like you might not even know that it's a what's the word i'm trying to think of i, th- I know what i want to say but i'm not ubiquitous? saying it very well or like like ideas that are so ubiquitous that or no i don't know but it's something that's like it, it, it's so it's so prevalent that like you might not even think that it originated from one particular th- i like i don't know if that's oh, quite what yeah, i'm trying yeah. to say oh, no. but no that happened like when when i i there was this that the the stop the punch right before the bell scene in in like the first one of the earliest episodes of ipo i put i, I brought up on server and it's like hey a joe reference and so i was like that's a really common thing though and i'm like okay but do you know of anything that predates joe that has that <laughs> and they didn't have an answer for me and i was like you know so um like because that's just so specific like you know yeah if there's something that, that it, before joe that has it um i don't know of it but you know i saw it in, you know joe's the oldest thing i saw it in so that's why i felt you know and if someone has an answer to that because again like joe's kind of important so it's kind of hard to overlook it you mm-hmm. know um especially yeah when it comes to boxing series especially but also other you know sports or action or anime in general so anime manga um but now i'm really more curious about the anime because like i know like i said i knew they changed things but I, yeah i didn't i forgot that like oh yeah it's also influential as an anime like you know so even though i know the core story i don't know the full anime basically um yeah, I'll go through the story a fourth time. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to back to Joe is uh, um, Nishi's gang tortures him a bit, um, but uh, he, he he once the food comes out, he he doesn't you know he's he's up on his feet again, and they're kind of like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> um, and so um, there's a part what, he takes off his shirt to get ready to fight, and I want to talk about the art of it. Um, so I'm gonna link it in the description. There's a blog post by the guy, the, he's called Hawks, he's the translator, he's, he's part of the group that, um, took on the translation of Joe when it, and, you know, fixed it and basically made it good, um, 
And one thing he notes about the like, so like, um, you you know the page, the panel I'm thinking of where like Joe takes off his shirt and he's got like his, he's got a he's still got a cartoonish face, but his body looks kind of like realistic in a sense. Like it's got like you see the defined muscles and he's got like nipples and there's like rib lines. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks it does look kind of weird. Like and the, there's shading on it. Like where his face still looks kind of car- cartoonish in a sense. And I do think that like stops being as uh, much an issue later on. But I want to point out, basically, quote that art, that, what that post is that like the art in Joe was super like progressive for the time. A lot of the stuff, like you've seen Tezuka's art style, right? The very cartoony, um, simplified shapes and stuff, right? Yes. Um, and you can kind of see that in the faces, especially. But like, like one point he made is like character, like Joe has nipples. That's unusual for the time period. Um, that's unusual so like, for like nowadays even like that's not yeah, that's like not an unusual, anime yeah. or a manga boy who has nipples like what you know i hadn't <laughs> thought about that yeah so it's like like the you know so yeah there's in this panel specifically i'm thinking like yeah that's a little weird because he's got a he's got does have a cartoony face and a more realistic body but again like this is also like boundary pushing for the time period and even like yeah that's uh, the, he, there's aspects to it we don't see that much today even um so it, it would it's just really interesting to consider how like you know this this kind of like the, the, these kind of proportions and like relative this was a realistic art style back then <laughs> um like obviously it predates like um otomo's akira like and he well he his manga i remember you know it, it was also like super realistic art style like you know or Ur- ursawa like you know so it's it's inter- it, it's interesting um to think about but anyway uh Nishi just eats while Joe beats the shit out of his dudes. <laughs> um, and then he, the then there's the fight with Nishi himself. Um, well, yeah, and also like some of the stuff in the prison. I, um, I don't know. It was definitely it was definitely brutal. Like the the whole uh, what did they call it? Uh, you know where everyone like climbs up on the thing and then they just like jump down yeah, on him. The and torture. Was, yeah, yes. the torture stuff. It was. <sighs> eh. Yeah. No. It's. It, yeah. The, yeah. Just got because it's like yeah. It, it is very. Um, like grounded violence, like I could see. Yeah, that's something. People, well, oh, no, I, no, I think about that specific specific torture. That's not too far off from like. There's an actual like boxing training technique where they'll like drop a, a like a heavy w- a weight a ball on. Oh, your, you like, mean the thing that stuff. they did in the manga? Oh, did they do that later in the manga? Yeah, yeah, yeah they no, did that no, later, was... where they were using like pumpkins in the prison. Oh, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right. So the, yeah, so I, I, I so it's thought, like, like torture, is... but it also kind of like plays into the training part of it. So it's just <laughs> well, yeah, it's like an exaggerated form of it used to cause harm, basically. Because um, I think you know he's also being held down, so he can't like move his body in the way he wants to 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 get you know prepare against it. So yeah, because um... I think um, it's even like referenced back to like. Um... You know, when they do oh, the thing with the pumpkins, yeah, yeah. they even reference, like, I what think... happened to Joe, and it's like, oh, that's a, you know, like, it's an interesting, I guess, way to foreshadow it, sort of, if you'd call it that, or set up the... Kind of, like, yeah, he's like, it's, it, yeah, it's just like a, a torture technique that happens to resemble boxing training, so it's kind of interesting that, Maybe like, there's, like, an intentional it... parallel there, that, like, to train yeah, for boxing it is a form, it is synonymous with... Yeah, no, yeah, like, even if he didn't do it on purpose, like... It, he, his mind was in that boxing headspace, so it, it's so, like maybe it subconsciously connects us to box. Or no, the, well, it reference back. I, I don't know. That, it's probably it, might, it was more likely intentional, but it's it's fun to think about. Um, well, yeah, because interrupting cause, you there. Well, yeah, because thinking you know like how like oh this boxing training is kind of like synonymous with um this like torture technique. I think is kind of interesting and in how um, especially seeing like some of the stuff that that Joe does and it seems very like. Uh, like taxing on his body and it seems very much like a a mindset that like he's gonna burn himself out um and so i think it's yeah. kind of interesting that there is such a whether it was intentional or mm-hmm. not like there is such a direct parallel to like this form of torture being a a method of training you know you know it's like obviously exaggerated and they're in different contexts but the fact that there's anything that could connect them is kind of well you're making me think of a later uh thing that where uh, a certain fight later very much like explores a divide between like the the toughness of boxing like being done on purpose and it being like forced onto someone in a mm-hmm. different context like that um and it's and it's a pretty interesting fight but um that's not gonna be for a good while so uh um i just want to you know you made me think of it um but anyway yeah joe um basically beats the shit out of nishi um and gets put into solitary confinement even though he didn't start anything <laughs> 
He just finished things, so he looks like he's bad. Okay, okay. Now it goes from le- from uh, right to left. Okay. Yeah, it was yeah. just like the first volume, but it was. Eh. I think I like I had finished what... reading the first volume and I forgot. Like when I went to the second, there was like time between, and I went to. Uh, I just kind of instinctively started going right to left, and I was like, "Oh wait, that's right. It was left to right at first. <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh. Yeah, no, it, 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 glad, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> the the wrong, reading the wrong way, or the, it's the right way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anyway, uh, there's so we're at the the trial, the civil tr- case for you know Joe's regarding his exact uh, imprisonment, and Yoko's here. Um, a girl <laughs> in my old shonen manga. <laughs> well, no, there was already Sachi, but I, you know, um, and Yoko like. Uh, especially thinking of like later in the series yoko is definitely like a good character um so i'm looking forward to th- like talking more about her but um and even now she's kind of interesting because joe like joe's like assuming things of her like oh you're just uh you know like because he uh he screwed her out of money and so of course like why is she why is she here you know that's that's a question that you know comes up God, I'm so confused because I'm looking back and I'm like, no, I'm supposed to be on the the other side right now. Like, I don't wait, like which side is it again? Like, um, well, yeah, and uh, I I think I'll you know I'm I was a, I think a little confused by like her dynamic with Joe, uh, partially because like the I don't know part of it I think is the translation and part of it is like I'm not I feel like I'm not understanding Joe's perspective. Like I don't know I feel like there's something I'm missing here, um, but definitely like the whole. He, I think he said something along the lines of like, "Oh, you made like you." Actually, never mind. I think I'm remembering it wrong. Many words were said, but nothing of value was said. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'll try to hopefully, you know, uh, give my thoughts, and maybe I'll remember, make you remember what you were, ho- help you remember what you were trying to say. Um, but anyway, yeah, Joe gets accused of all his, uh, you know, assault, stealing, fraud, etc. Um, and it's kind of um there and like him and uh, Dante sort of like like um like he kind of try to tries to pin like make Dante look like a a bad guy because like he's not on trial so like it kind of like um and, and you know Dante leans into it so it's it's kind of a way to like like obviously both of them want like Joe, want Joe out of there like that's why he's why he's there um so so Joe kind of um like he, you know it, it's a way to kind of take the heat off of him in a sense um. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, he's still in there for a year, so. But anyway, yeah, Joe gets pulled, taken outside. Uh, he, he yells at Yoko. He assumes, you know, oh, you're, you're just here to uh, see me be punished, right? Um, but she's, the whole time, she's very much, like, not showing much emotion at all. Um, you know, so it's, you know, it's, I guess it's left, yeah, it's left to, you know, the audience to sort of assume how she's feeling. Um, though we get more of her later, so. But yeah, Joe's thrown into the, the police van to be sent to the... Uh, juvenile detention center and uh like i said like i said before he's crying and he stops when he sees nishi um and there's also the the like there's a bit with with the with other students like people joe's age i would assume who are like just they, they see the police man and they start like mocking uh like oh you're you know um you're you're gonna be forced to send to prison like laughing about how they're gonna be uh, forced to prison and you know have to eat bad food like mm-hmm. um which is interesting contrast but yeah nishi um like before, he had he was you know he was the strongest, but he was relying on his goons a lot. And now he's basically alone, so he's like afraid of going to the juvenile juvenile hall, basically. Um, and Joe's trying to take it easy and like uh, act cocky, but um, once he actually sees the place, he gets uh, a f- um, he's he's he loses a bit of his composure. But yeah, they get brought to the prison. They kind of get led to their uh, where they're going to be staying. Uh, they try to sure enough the. Uh, <laughs> The other juveniles there are gonna, you know, haze them basically, since they're new. Also, in Joe's like kind of, Joe kind of gives them a loud like speech almost, like he, you know, like hyping himself up and even says like, "Oh, I'm an evil, vicious wolf." Like he's trying to again build himself up as um, like he is tough, but you know, he's he doesn't look like an evil, vicious wolf when he's crying in a van. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they get uh, the shit beat out of him. But then in the morning, Joe has taken a bunch of beds and. They they sort of avoid getting um, in more trouble because he like calls the authorities who are now like up and basically yeah basically he's not doing much to alleviate any tensions but he's also not standing down and or sitting down and taking it either so anyway um Joe's mostly interested in escaping 
and we get to um or oh wait no is that a little later okay yeah there's a bit um joe gets another one of the tomorrow lessons for tomorrow um and then we get the the his escape attempt with the <laughs> pigs um well first it turned it started out as like a, a bullying you know thing with others trying to start shit but um and Joe ends up riding on a pig as they stampede so he can try to escape. Um, <laughs> this is the reference I want to point out. Um, if, yeah. In the first episode of Gurren Lagann, the, uh, they ride the pig moles, um, Kamen and Simon. So that's just a, another specific one I wanted to call attention to. Oh, yeah. And then as they get like right to, you know, they're close to their escape, but then someone appears out of nowhere and stops them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Cause, and that's where we get introduced to um, Rikishi, the uh, the former boxer. Um, oh, I wanted to point out because, like, I think these, I don't think these were the the volumes that we're reading from, or at least the ones that have the covers, were like the original volume releases, like because they'll they'll re-release and reprint them. Um, I thought it was interesting that Rikishi is on the cover for Volume One, even though he doesn't appear till Volume Two. Um, because he's obviously a really like he's he's the rival. Like if Nishi's the enemy turned friend, then Riki she's just the rival character. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he's this former boxer who's uh, you know obviously you know also in juvenile detention, but um, he's you know more skilled and uh, you know competent. But um, and like he's actually someone who's able to like stop Joe. Like yeah, he underestimates Joe a bit and gets uh, hit himself, but um, he's obviously like tougher. Um, and ends up. Uh, downing him which uh yeah i think that's the first loss joe has to someone his old age because he also got uh beaten up by dompe earlier but um and yeah this was also like yeah you know uh, yeah, this is a real boxer basically and even says that like oh your your jabs are pro everything else was like you're a child like so i guess there's a kind of like boxing kind of matures them you know grows them up a bit because like the the jabs that he learned from um dompe those are actual punches. Everything else is nothing. But yeah, now Joe kind of like, before he was like, oh, I can't believe I, I followed that training, even though I don't you know, want to. But now he's like, well, you know, hmm, that, if that, I can beat a Prakishi, then yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll rise from the bottom and become a master. Just keep the postcards coming. Like now, now that he has something to strive for, even if it's just, I want to beat the fuck out of this specific guy. <laughs> I mean, I guess he's going for something. Yeah, I definitely think it's interesting that, um, you know, when stuff's going on later, and they're like, oh, hey, you can leave your cell. He's like, no, I have to stay here. I have to train. <laughs> and then when the cops are just, or not, well, cops, officers, whatever they are, they're yeah, just uh, like, what? Security is... guards, yeah. Yeah, they're just like, <laughs> what is with this guy? <laughs> he's he's a weirdo. And then, yeah, we after that, uh, uh, he sends, we get to see that he sent a letter to uh, Dante, who's, um, you know, who's glad that... Uh, Joe's finally, like, interested in boxing, and he wants to, like, there's, uh, you know, an extended sequence with the kids, and they're trying to figure out how to get boxing to Joe, um, basically, and, uh, it turns out Yoko is also, like, interested in the, like, the rehabilitation, and, uh, she's come in with, like, an entertainment troupe, but, of course, specifically, she has her interests on Rikishi, primarily, because, um, you know, he's a boxer, but, uh, obviously it extends to the whole, uh, yeah. And yeah, there's a bunch of comedy that's uh, with the kids and them, everyone being stupid, but uh, they get in. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, yeah, maybe maybe this changes. I don't know if it's just, you know, humor will kind of evolve over time, but this is just kind of like, eh, not really doing it for me. <laughs> no, not, no, I'm, I'm, I'm like this, like I said earlier, this is weakest touch chapters, and uh, I still agree. <laughs> um. Like, I can say, like, I didn't really, like, like, when I first read Joe, I didn't start to, like, really go, like, oh, okay, until the, ne the next reading, basically. Um, so, like, I, I think, I, like, again, I, I think I put it down for a bit in this first vol volume or two, and then, but then I did pick it up and keep going, and then I was, like, yeah, it was, so, so, like, I think I was more into it by, like, the point that, like, they actually got to the boxing but then it was after that that I really, you know, started to go, this is really good manga. Um, so, but anyway, uh, Joe literally, yeah, he has to be literally forced to go see the play. Um, and then um, he gets pissed off to see Dante getting, you know, whipped as the, because he's the hunchback. Um, oh, you know, I hadn't thought about, because like, because Yoko's, you know, Esmeralda, who's helping him. And I hadn't thought about how like, 
because J- when Joe bitches at her later, one of the things he says is like, oh, you're just here to feel better about yourself. And, you know, sort of, and like, there's this kind of like, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to read into the actual characters of the, you know, the play or the whatever, you know, whatever, you know, however they're adapting it. But like, she is, she she's in the play. She's the same. She's doing the same thing as she's doing in real life, basically with helping the, uh, the downtrodden in a sense, mm-hmm. like this sort of angelic, beautiful, like, yeah. Um, <laughs> And because like uh, we'll we'll talk about that scene because I, I I do really like that interaction. Um, but uh, I just I just noticed that while I was flipping through, because yeah, Joe immediately starts switching because you know he doesn't like how you know Dombe is being treated this way. But you know he did that to get in you know as a way to sort of get into the the prison uh, or the 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 center detention center. Um, but anyway, then she's doing an Esmeralda scene, and then he's like, well, maybe the real Esmeralda was like that, but not the girl who plays her. <laughs> <laughs> he's such a dick. And it's, and it's, I don't know. Um, well, and especially, like, the argument they get into outside, like, yeah, Joe and Rikishi fight a bit, and she steps in, and, like, well, like, because he, like, no, like I said, normally see, she's so composed, but, like... Like he gets her like pissed the fuck like she's yelling like you shut up and she she's like has these fucking expressions like <laughs> he just completely like um gets under her skin which you know is why I think there's at least some truth to what he's saying you know yeah um, yeah because he was definitely you know saying that she you know she's not who she seems to be and definitely like he treats her differently than everybody else does where everybody else plays into this idea that like oh she's this um you know brightens everybody's day when she's there she's um you know it does kind of tie back to the thing with like the money where i i i don't know if i'm misremembering it but i swear i thought he said something like oh you donated this money do you feel good now or whatever like um um i think he kind of or maybe or you know and also like the fact that she comes to the prison and is you know there to be that bright spot it's like oh does that make you feel good you know are you doing this for yeah, I don't know if he specifically said that about the money, but that feels like something he would s- accuse her of considering the other things he says. So, um, but yeah, he does kind of like, you know, um, you know, she is doing nice things, but, you know, um, at the end of the day, but at the, she's also like, yeah, he accuses the, you know, he, he challenges the motive of her doing ni- those nice things. Uh, and, and yeah, when he, when he points out, like, you just do this to make yourself feel good. And she's just like horrified. <laughs> I don't know, it's a good expression. Yeah, that was definitely what made me think that, like, there was some truth to it, but I'm not 100% sure where if where that'll go. Well, yeah, because she doesn't have a response for him, because it's like, like, you know, even if she is doing a nice thing, but, like, you know, he's, 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 um, you know, right, and he, he just, like, and, you know, Riki, she just gets mad, and she steps in between them again. And definitely, like, with, the, with where it goes later, um, like, during their boxing match, and kind of her reaction, and the way Joe is just like, no, you have to stay and watch what you created, or something like that. Um, Mm -hmm. it definitely seems that like there's, there's something there and I'm not, I'm not quite getting it. Yeah. Um, well, like another scene that I keep thinking of is like later on where like, uh, Joe is doing work in the, in the field and like he, he brings down the, the whole heart and whoops, I got dirt on you. And then she does the pettiest fucking thing where she picks up some dirt and throws it on. (laughs) Like he's already filthy from working the field. like, whoops, I got dirt on. Like (laughs) she's like, he, he's very good at dragging her down to his level, which, um, so like, I, I think I, what I'm tempted to say is that like, you know, again, again, I have the benefit of later knowledge, but like, she, even though she is this, like, wealthy person and she is, like, you know, doing able to do these nice things because of what she has, in some ways she's also very similar to Joe. Um, she's just, be- like, she, you know, she, I, I guess you could almost say, like, their masks are inverted, maybe? Where Joe is ultimately, like, this vulnerable, per- vulnerable person who puts on this loud, um, cocky, you know, arrogant um, face. Uh, Yoko puts on this calm, you know, beautiful face but underneath it she can be loud and petty and chi- like she's about the same age i think you know mm-hmm. she's a child in her own way um so uh um yeah i did yeah <laughs> I, I, I do think it's an interesting dynamic um yeah no i definitely like i said i think yeah these two are probably my fa- like um probably my favorite characters in the manga so um but we'll see how i feel like going through the rest of it too um but anyway, the the idea for boxing comes up, and Yoko sort of goes, "Hey, that sounds interesting." And um, she even brings up examples in, um, I think, um, in in yeah, American prisons that use boxing, and it lower, you know, it helped overall with it. Um, 
lowered fighting and assaults because it gave them an outlet for that. Um, and so she's like, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll get the equipment and we could do it here. Um, and ultimately, yeah, we see that like it does help the boxers because they have something like and um, I'll, I'll talk about it later. But um, but yeah, of course, the highlight of it is Joe and Rikishi and their rivalry. Um, yeah, Rikishi is definitely one of those characters where I, I've seen I wouldn't remember through what, but I've like randomly seen his face in in things uh and so when he showed up i'm like oh there's the guy he's here <laughs> i think it was the same way but i forget what i knew before you know com- obviously compared to what i know now um but uh yeah we'll, we'll t- um yeah obviously we'll get more of rikishi later because they're they said after this they're gonna they're gonna fight it's in some way so professionally um but anyway joe finally gets some face-to-face uh advice with uh Dompe. Who's very insistent that he, he can't beat Rikishi as he is now. Like, I think he even tells him, like, oh, your footwork's bad, which is something he tries to impress on him later with Aoyama. Um, but, uh, Dompei ultimately knocks, knocks Joe out. I think he uses the, uh, the cross ca- the counter, which, uh, we see comes into play later. Um, yeah, because, like, he knocked Joe out, but he got really hurt himself because he, he's a- See, and it's presented in a way that's very, like, you know, I, you know, it, it's, um, I think. How, um, I heard described, because, like, um, if you read e- Ippo or watch Ippo, like, it, uh, how, um, what the what described it is, like, Ippo is, like, it's, it's presented in a way that makes you feel, like, feel like how a boxer feels, and we, were, uh, we were comparing that to Joe when we was discussing it, and, and where Joe is very much, like, from the audience's perspective, mm-hmm. um, and so in this way, it's like, it's kind of like presenting like, yeah, basic boxing things with like an air of mystery about them, like the way, yeah, it's just a counter hit. But, um, like, we, we don't see the counter hit. We see Joe on the floor, and then uh, Dompe, like, he's talking about, like, yeah, for tomorrow. And then he starts, like, bleeding from the nose and mouth because he's feeling the damage from the, from the, the you know, the, the punch he countered, you know. So, but we don't, you know, it's, like I said, it's presented almost like a mystery, <laughs> even though it's, like, again, it's just boxing. Yeah, yeah, because, um, like, when it first happens, um, of course, this is my first time reading it, so I don't know. I'm like, wait, did he, is he, like, dead? Like, what happened? <laughs> and then, obviously, died. I'd read further, and it's like, oh, no, it was just the after effect of boxing. But, you know, yeah, there definitely is that kind of, like, mystique to it, where, like, first going through it, it's like, what, what happened? Yeah, and there's definitely some uh, some points in the series where, it, uh, like, you know, if, if if you've heard anyone say, oh, it's it's realistic, at the end of the day, it, it isn't. It's it's still a manga, um, and there's definitely points where they, you know, uh, if push boxing a little bit, it's still not as like, um, you know, like again, I I, I haven't read uh, Ring of Kakuro, but um, anime yeah, is unrealistic. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I just um, because there's one fight in particular people don't like because it really strains things, and uh, yeah, um, but I, I'm fine with it. So, but we'll we'll talk about that as we go. Um, but um, there's also an interesting bit with Yoko where um. She kind of quotes what Dompe was saying about how, like, um, you know, the beautiful tomorrow filled with uh, blood, sweat, dust, and, you know, and she's like, she she says, like, for, but for him, that's, like, the real tomorrow, and she almost has, like, like, an excited look on her face when she says that, and other people are like, what the hell are you saying? And she just kind of, like, she, she just brushes it off, like, every, like, she just has this, like, moment, basically, um, cause I, you know, she's, she's in some of, I think, inspired, or, you know, she's taking something from this and everyone else is just like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> but yeah, um, he prom- she promises to get the, the equipment they need and Joe starts practicing the counter punch, knocks out Nishi easily. Um, of course he does it in a very Joe way. Cause he was like, um, cause Nishi's like being like friendly and watching over him. And he's like, no, hit me. I need to practice. And then like when Nishi won't do it, he like starts hitting him to piss him off. He's like, <laughs> dumb idiot. And yeah, then Joe basically knocks out the whole prison. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of interesting the way that, um, Joe is presented as this, I don't know. He doesn't really come off as like an <laughs> underdog cause he's able to beat up all these, all these people. Um, but, mm-hmm. you know, at the same time, it's not just like, oh, here are these random goons that Joe can beat up. Like, I don't know. The the story gets a, a decent amount of mileage out of them, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, like, because, hmm, you know, if you want to talk about the underdog thing, like, because, yeah, he's, there's, you know, he's come very much coming up from the bottom, but he's still super talented. Like, you know, because that's why Dante took notice of him, you know. And, of course, compared to Rikishi, like, Rikishi's an actual, like, pro boxer. Well, yeah, it's um, definitely, like, so. there are maybe, like, one or two people, you know, like, he, he has that one person to kind of, like, strive 
for mm-hmm. and like Im- aspire to be uh better than but yeah I for the most saying, part but compared to like all these like all these other guys like he's obviously way better than like them at boxing and stronger like he's not you know he you know he's coming from this little place in, like in the world of boxing but like compared to all these characters like we don't see he's not in the world of boxing and you know by the mm-hmm. even by the end of the stretch quite yet so he even in this space he isn't an underdog right he's like he's basically the second strongest person in the whole facility yeah and um yeah so like yeah yeah he has something that everyone else is missing and even like and the, this you know with the the equipment comes in it, it gives them some of what was missing basically but um but anyway the ring comes out and uh they're gonna do the joe versus rikishi i'm trying to think if i had anything specific to say about the 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 fight because i know there's some stuff that happens but i'm just still skimming through it because again yeah there's a lot of like explaining like the rules like there's a part where um <laughs> we get a really bad translation <laughs> where um don <laughs> yeah you know the one um where don because like obviously the because yeah the, there's um you know the boxing rule with the technical knockout where if you have three downs in the same round you're con- that's considered a knockout um and Dompe, you know, that, that rule is disinva- disadvantageous to Joe, so he's like, um, let's fight without that rule. And then, uh, but the, how the translation says it is, like, um, in, instead of having a, the TKO rule, they should just fight until they're dead. <laughs> or what, yeah, it says, it I about. want this match to keep going until one of the boxers dies completely. <laughs> dies completely? <laughs> 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 yeah that's not like you know knocked out completely is basically what he was meaning but <laughs> that's gotta be the funniest one of the mistranslations uh... <laughs> god but anyway yeah joe is like i think there's even a point made where he um yeah joe isn't even in the same like weight class as rikishi so but he still refuses to be handicapped um but yeah they start the fight and joe basically has nothing like no chance like he's just completely getting um manhandled basically but yeah he does keep you know being persistent and um after all well, like then we get the moment you kind of brought up earlier with the like he's being like the brutality is happening and yoko kind of tries to yeah she um is kind of horrified and leaves because she's just like doesn't understand you know um like she yeah she doesn't understand how he could just take those blows and keep going but yeah and as she tries to leave joe stops her and says that you know she has to um you know to sort of take responsibility you know she did she's she's why this is happening so she should see it through to the end um and she she does stay but then um joe finally gets off the counter punch and uh they both go down it's a, it's a draw like um yeah yeah i really like the the climax of it where it's like there's just like a couple like multiple pages where things just seem to be like the moment is just like frozen in time and there's like all the the shocked reactions from the people you know all the all the cutaways that's classic classic anime classic manga (laughs) Um, i guess it's more it's more of a manga thing uh definitely for these uh yeah the way it can sort of like linger on the moment like that like with different panels um specifically like it definitely is a very I don't know. Yeah, and it, especially like because like with the the chapter ending, you see that panel once, and then you see that panel like two more times at the start of the next chapter. You know. Um, oh yeah, like, I guess it was also kind of. Be that's right. There were technically chapter breaks in there, uh, even though the ones I have don't have chapter yeah, listings. No, mine do, well, mine has like one credit page. Like there's the first the first one, and um, and then there's a credit page, and then there's two more with more with the so that you know, which implies to me like that's the start of the chapter. Um, is uh the the the, the second and third ones, but uh. Okay, so but, that yeah, that makes still... a little more sense why the panel was repeated like three times. Yeah, <laughs> well, because especially like if you, um if I take out the credits page and it's rep- it's not just repeated three times, but it's it's twice in a row with at the end of the one page and then the top of the next page. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you just look at the that the, those next two pages as one chapter, it's at the top of the first page, then a bunch of reactions, then a bunch more reactions at the bottom of the next page. So it's uh more spread out in that way. Yeah, but, um, and of course including like the week in between the two chapters. But uh, yeah, um. But no, I yes, I didn't think that because yeah, you where you read it, you didn't even have the credit pages, so you don't even know where the chapter. Yeah, where like the, like the it, they ma- broke it. it makes sense yeah. that it would do that because like if it was the end and start of a new chapter, then like th- th- 
manga do that because there's like a weekly break in between. So it's like yeah. where we last left off. But yeah, it and definitely made this a bit yeah. of an exhausting read because I was like, mm, I don't know when the chapters are ending, so I'm just going and going and going. <laughs> no, because and there's definitely parts where I could like, you know, I can kind of infer it. But other times I'm like, is this where it ended or is this where it ended? And I yeah. don't know. Um, so, so yeah, I, I can see. Yeah, at least the volumes give enough of a, give a, a, something of a break. But um, and it's more apparent later because like in later uh volumes you'll have the full like covers to the volumes in the you know so it, yeah um but no i, I didn't think about that because yeah, you're right this is uh like yeah we we don't even have like yeah every other manga we've read so far has very distinct chapters <laughs> and this one did but it doesn't anymore in the way it was released so <laughs> um I, yeah i didn't think about yeah, I, that and how that is different from anything we've done so far um but anyway joe and rikisha are knocked out uh dompe kind of does a post-mortem explaining what the hell even happened um both boxers died completely <laughs> they died the completely. manga is over oh god and yeah he also even talks about like how the boxers like um like rikishi you know realized what joe was doing and you know started to develop his own counter technique or uh, to consider to, or stretch at, stretch at, uh, strategy to avoid it in the first place which ultimately you know he got hit so but yeah, Dompe carries Joe off while everyone else takes Rikishi so that they can uh, recover. And yeah, everyone else is inspired and they want to fight too. Um, like it's chaos, basically. And yeah, I think like what we kind of see with like the boxer, the, the the delinquents becoming boxers is like, like we also kind of saw it with Joe in a sense where like he very much hates authority. He hates rules and systems, you know, but like. With boxing, like, boxing is a set of rules and systems. Like, there's the referee and the coaches as authorities. And so, like, through boxing, they, they're given order and structure, basically. And um, so it's part of, how, I guess, how, you know, they, re they get re rehabilitated, in a sense. Because, um, yeah, they do, like, you know, they get into their fights and they part of, the, like, part of them wants to do it as normal. But no, you, like, you can't do um moves like this you have to box for you know like you have to follow because boxing like yeah, it's a fighting sport but there's so like compared to like mixed martial arts or stuff like that there's so many like restrictions onto what you can and can't do you know um so it is different in that sense i think um oh no i guess what i said yeah yoko literally says what i said um you know she's saying how like yeah no one's making them for uh, abide these rules but they're doing it now so <laughs> well okay she's thank you yoko for saying what i thought i was i was proud that i i made these connections i was like yeah themes and she's just like yeah, i literally just gonna say it and i'm like okay thank you yoko um because much like other shonen uh things tend to be a little more blatant than you might uh remember well that's like i think i've talked i remember talking about this sense like back in when naruto but it's like it is like like you know, I always have the feeling like when I make the connection on my own, I'm like, yeah, and then it's spelled out and I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> never mind, I guess. Because <laughs> um, like at, the, at that at when, when you get to a point like I'm watching a show with people on my server right now and like we're noticing things and like we just watched an episode that was obviously building towards conflict and I'm like, oh, I'm waiting for them to make this connection between this conflict and this conflict and how they're actually pretty similar. And they haven't done that yet. So we're kind of waiting for the shoe to drop, you know, Um <laughs> So, because, like, we're at the point where, like, we're recognizing enough of, like, themes and stuff that we can recognize, like, how this, like, we can expect on some level what the story is going to do, but then, you know, like, at some point you're just waiting for it to happen, or, like, in this case where I made these connections and forgot that the story just kind of says it to your face, you know? Yeah. Like, um, which is obviously my fault, not the stories, but, it, <laughs> so it's, it is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, they arranged the, uh, the tournament, and, uh, but yeah, now they have something to focus on with the you know, the boxing, like Joe's kind of finding ways to train, like using the the farming to strengthen his wrist. Um. Actually, this did kind of give me the thought um, that like, you know, for, you know, a lot of the stories we've read up to this point, generally, not always, but generally, there's some kind of like end game in sight, like the character wants to do something, the character has like a goal they're setting out to do. Uh, but I guess this story is kind of interesting in that does it really have anything like that? I don't know. It's just kind of yeah, like Joe, Joe right. boxing and he, because like when the, when the fight with Rikishi happened, I was kind of getting the feeling of like, Hmm, there's really like many more volumes of this. Like where does the story go from here? 
Um, so that was, I guess, kind of interesting. Right. Like, like the the goals are more like like he re- like the you know the first, he didn't have a goal. Well, he did have a goal, get money at first, and then that kind of like pushed him into juvenile detention. So then at that point, like he okay, he wants to escape, but then he met Rikishi, and then his goal changed to. I gotta. F- I want to beat this fucker, and then they actually did fight, and now it's like, well, let's fight. Or, well, yeah. Then there's like the tournament. Oh, we'll meet in the tournament. And then, no, rikishi has got to leave. So it's very, yeah. It, it is very like, um, un. I don't want to say unclear as like, because yeah, if you look at certain points, you'll see, yeah, okay, this is what Joe wants to do. Yeah. But it, the the reaching there is not is is very. It's not. Yeah, clear it's very or much like what do, what does he want to do now? And then it's after that, what does he want to do now? It's not like oh, he wants to do this, and in the background, he wants to do this. Or rather, another thing is like, yeah, yeah, well, another thing that is like things just change, and that changes how, like, I think the, of the the major goals that I'm thinking of right now is like, the only one that he actually, like, he, he had, and then he actually got a chance to go after was, he wants to beat Rikishi, he fought Rikishi, and then, yeah, they haven't, and then it's like, okay, let's fight again. Well, Rikishi's gone now, something unexpected happened and changed how he reaches that goal, and that's kind of at the start, too, he wanted to get money, something happened and changed his goal, basically, and of course, yeah, he obviously dropped the goal to escape prison, because Rikishi became more uh, imperative, um, so, and then, of course, he just was able to leave, of his, you know, after a year, so, um, yeah, you're right, it is very, like, how it approaches the, the goals and general direction of, you know, the protagonist's, like, motive is, is very, uh, different and more, yeah, sporadic, almost, um, but it's still, you know, I'd, I'd say it's not, it's pretty natural, but it's, uh, it, it's interesting because, yeah, I hadn't considered that as, like, a way this manga is different from a lot of what we've covered so far. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, there's this moment where, um, yeah, Yoko's just trying to talk to Joe, or, um, or no, she's not, she's just watching him, and she's telling him, telling, she's, or he tells her to fuck off, and then, um, they get into an argument, and there's the, the part where she throws the dirt on him. <laughs> she's so petty i love her uh but yeah, everyone's training uh and then the translation well like the, they stop using like the, the that font and they use like a more like you know the font the, it was on the page you sent me with the 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 probably one of the the weirdest oh translation my God. <laughs> you thought it couldn't Not- get worse from the <laughs> until one boxer dies completely <laughs> This is like yeah. when translators' notes have gone too far. <laughs> um, well, yeah. For reference, it's a it's a bit later, but um, uh, yeah, Aoyama gets in 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 or he's uh, Joe is being just is being told what happened in Aoyama's fight where he this little guy just beat the shit out of a, a bigger guy and he's like oh he moved like Konyak and Joe's like Konyak and then there's a translator note that's just the wiki it's just a link to the Wikipedia page for what Konyak is. <laughs> And like I kind of know what it is. It's like I forget if it's I forget what it's made out of, but it's like a jelly. It, it, it's usually made into like a jelly like substance. So it's like they could have just tra- he's moving like jelly. Look, I tra- like, but it, like this is why you don't always want a literal translation. You know, this translation's so literal. It it like <laughs> you don't know what it like. And it's it, also it's, <laughs> like the translator's note doesn't give any context. It's like here, go to the Wikipedia page, check it for Learn yourself. Learn it yourself, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like it's just very like like you're not doing your job as translators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, like, I, and I love having translator notes. Like I've talked about it for like Fairy Tale or Soul Eater. Like it's nice to have, but then there's there's a point where it's just not helpful anymore. Uh so it's funny <laughs> i mean like i would have yeah, even understood if they like kept konyaku and had like a little asterisk and it's like this is what it means um you know like you know at least kind of give context to why you're not translating it and just like keeping the yeah, word there yeah, like you like, know this is, this w- so, yeah like some yeah, would I argue think, that that's yeah. not the optimal way to translate but you know i mean like it's i at least understand the intent if that's what you're doing um but then yeah it's <laughs> just like go to the wikipedia page <laughs> Yeah, well, and I think what makes it worse is, like, in this case, I think, like, yeah, Jelly would have been, like, there's no reason to keep it as Kong, like, there's no pun or wordplay here that would need it to be, like, you know, needed to stay the same, Mm -hmm. basically, you know, like, they could have just said moving like Jelly or literally anything else that moves in that way that would have fit what, like, the, the, that's, because, you know, so, yeah, it's just not a good translation, so, yeah, it's, it's funny that it got even worse. Um, there's always the, the, it's always darkest before dawn, so they say. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, T- Dompe's training up all the, uh, 
delinquents, you know, showing them various exercises that they can use. Um, and of course, he does take special interest in Aoyama specifically, who's like this really small and weak. Um, but uh, through special coaching, he's able to find, um, you know, he's able to, to box um, and win. <laughs> Of course, like, he's also, like, only training Aoyama and pushing away Joe and forcing Joe to learn himself, which he explains later. Um, yeah, this was definitely, like, a low point for Joe, because uh, it's a lot of, like, why are you acting like this, you dumb shit? Yeah, well, because he's finally given, and now I think about it, he's, yeah, finally been given kindness by this person, mm-hmm. and now that person is pushing him away for apparently no reason. Well, like, yeah, yeah, it's also, um, like, you know, you get frustrated with both characters, because, like, why are you pushing Joe away with no explanation, um... But then also from like Joe's perspective, seeing the way he kind of he gets that cocky attitude back and he's like not, I don't know, he's kind of losing himself. And so it's like on both sides. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> right. Um, of course, when it's all explained, like it makes perfect sense because, yeah, Joe wasn't going to learn these lousy defensive techniques because like and yeah, I guess that which, may, you know, he's a very like cocky, arrogant character, you know, got to fight, got to be manly, got to have, you know, so doing something mm-hmm. that's, you know, Anything less than that would seem, you know, um, an ideal, but like, yeah, he, so he, but he's forced to learn it by, you know, fighting this guy he other, you know, should not lose to, in a sense, um, who Dompe is training specifically. Um, like, Joe even begs him, like, I, I just got to, like, he, he's on his knees, like, asking to be trained, and he continues to be ignored, so. <laughs> anyway, now I'm at the, the Kanyaku, uh, part. <laughs> Where, yeah, um, Aoyama beat the shit out of a guy he was uh, sparring or fighting with, um, like, to the point that he was bloody. And Joe's asking for an account on what the hell happened. Um, and, yeah, he basically dodges everything. And then when it, when his opponent was tired, he, he went in. Um, but anyway, the tournament starts after um, Joe's does more. Like, he, he does try to, like, um, get information from Aoyama, but he, you know, doesn't work out. But, yeah, the tournament starts. Uh, Tange explains more of the rules of boxing um and some like like how they're using the gloves to divide by weight class um which i i so i i, I don't think they quite explain everything because like i know for me at least like especially when first reading it because like there's different like there's six ounce gloves there's 12 ounce gloves like they're the gloves have different weights um again i, I i've never you know boxed or anything but i'm assuming that like because you know they, they give the the heavier gloves are a handicap so i assume that if you have heavier gloves it's just harder to get the power to make a punch which I don't know, because a part of me would think, like, oh, if you have heavier punches, wouldn't they hurt more? Mm-hmm. But um, I guess not, you know? So, like, that, that was definitely a part of, point of confusion that I've personally had. Um, that yeah, I definitely would have like, kind of thought, you know, I could understand, like, the heavier gloves meaning that, like, you get less speed and, like, force behind it. Um, but also it does kind of seem like, well, if the, you know, the point of contact is heavier, wouldn't it have, like, more? Um, but yeah. yeah. Or maybe the maybe it's heavier because of more padding, so it like I don't know. yeah it, I don't know um I don't so I guess I guess the our t- the takeaway is like yeah that we we recognize that like yeah the heavier gloves mean more of a handicap we're just not exactly sure of like how it handicaps the boxers boxer specifically mm-hmm. so it's not important it's just like I don't know because like going through like I always like going through like sports or even like like a kagi which is about mahjong and so it's not a sport but it's still like a gambling game that you learn and picking up on the rules as you go. And, um, like, I, I do, I did pick up on, like, yeah, there's a lot of cheating and shit, but I did pick up mo- on most of the rules of Mahjong from Akagi, and so, but then there's still, like, little details that I guess sometimes I don't get, so, which is why I, because, you know, I feel, feel like in other, I just happen to have, not have had that issue in other things, personally, but, like, you know, it's, it, it's not a fault of the thing, like, again, it's not super important, we just need to know, heavier gloves, more of a handicap, we're, we're, go- we got all the information that we need, um, I'm just, you know, I just, well, but what if I had a little more information? <laughs> and anyway, so yeah, John Pay explains the rules. The skull guy sort of gives a pledge, which uh, pisses off Joe because I think I think he, I think what he's saying is supposed to apply to Joe, but um, or like you know he's or or maybe or I don't know, I'm not sure because again the translation's weird. So anyway, Rikishi gets his first match. He wins easily. Like it, <laughs> he he knocks the dude out of the ring. Like it's brutal. Yeah. Um, and then we get uh, Aoyama's match where he's up against a really big guy um, who, yeah, can't get him at all. And um, then we, you know, we directly see. Um, yeah, they, they are uh, generally like simpler kind of conflicts because we've, um, you know, this guy, he's doing a lot of, I mean, really, Aoyama is just using like his defense and the guy is, um, 
you know, like over over pursuing yeah. and like wearing himself out. And so then it's just like, ha, you have no energy. I win. Yeah. And it's also kind of interesting to see like, like, well, cause again, I'm, I'm also thinking of Hajime no Ippo where it's like, cause like I can like stepping back, I can see like, well, you know, Aoyama's, you know, it's, it's, a, it seems like a good strategy, but against like an actual boxer with stamina, like, you know, his, 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 his this only works on these newbie boxers because they don't have the stamina to, uh, yeah. Um, to last in in the ring when they can't hit him and stuff you know so it's like so but by having these newer boxers you know they're focused they're hyper focusing on single elements like so through Aoyama's great defense you see why having good defense of your own in stamina is important so it's like you know it's it's helpful yeah it's, it's just naturally helpful for learning the little things of boxing because by the time we get to the end these things will already be like assumed you know so like there's, you know, even yeah, you know, it's it's a sport thing, but there's still like a a power escalation to it, you know, um, and skill escalation. But yeah, Aoyama destroys the dude in a really bloody mess again. Um, Joe gets his first match against uh, Mat- uh Ran Matsuki. Uh, I don't remember. And yeah, I guess we see like because like Rikishi destroyed his opponent, but here's Joe against another novice boxer, but you know, someone with like. But, you know, Joe's still weak and, you know, he's he's got his talents, but, you know, like this guy's got headgear, so his punches aren't as effective. So it's a little it's more difficult for him. And, yeah, of course, Joe has no defense. So and, yeah, he's like he's alone. Uh, Dompe is taking points off of him. The crowd's heckling him because um, mm-hmm. there's a moment where he, at the end he's beating him up and he like lifts him off the ropes and knocks him out of the ring. And Yoko notes that he he's it's uh he seems to be punching while crying, and I don't know if that's like crying like tears because we don't quite see it. I don't think, or if he's just like the way he's like wa- like wailing or like the translation doesn't get. I don't think it wholly gets across what's happening here, but um, it's still kind of. But in some way, I think it does. At least we 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 do get that like he's being pushed here and like you know so he's just like he's just you know fr- he's at a low point. He's frustrated, um, and so he just kind of like lets it all out in this barrage and does you know come through with the match. Um. Oh no! Actually, yeah, he he was crying. I think he was crying because looking at these other panels, he does seem to have like lines around his eyes that remind that I think are the way that he draws tears. The the the, the art because oh yeah, I forgot to say is um yeah the the writing is done by uh, Kajuara Iki and um the art is Chiba Tetsuya. So it's it's uh is this the first one we've done that has two people? No, wait, I think it is. No, Boruto. Yeah, Boruto. Boruto also had a, a writers and the yeah sorry and of course Kishimoto so it was a weird production in the first place but this is the first uh, manga that is just two people I think because like yeah with Boruto I, you can't we can't really ignore Kishimoto even though he's, his name isn't on it in the same way you know um, but uh, yeah so okay yeah but I just I <laughs> want to remember the names in case I want because yeah when I talk about the art it's obviously um, Chiba Tetsuya and then when it's the writing it's uh, um, Kajiwara, so if we ever have a need to to say, because <laughs> we do bring up the authors quite a bit usually, so at least when we know their names. Yeah. But anyway, the first day of boxing is over, and so they the uh, there everyone's talking about it constantly until the next week. There's a bunch of gambling going on, but yeah, we get back to the uh, or get to the next match with Joe versus Aoyama. Oh, um, that's right, Yoko's dad comes in. I think we also find out at one point that he. He was a boxer when he was younger, and I think he he says like or um or I think or maybe Yoko said about or someone said about him that like yeah that kind of, that boxing gave him like a mindset that helped him good, be good in business I think or something like that um I feel like that was said but it, it doesn't seem to have been around here though um her Yoko or or is it Yoko's dad or granddad I don't remember anymore I'm terrible <laughs> <laughs> oh it is grandfather okay um. Yeah, he, uh, well, because, like, Joe's being extra cocky and arrogant, um, and he sort of points out that it's, like, like, the way he's doing it is, like, by putting this sort of big expectation up, it's, like, you have to, you have to win. So he's, like, he's putting more weight on himself, basically. And, yeah, there's even a part where, like, he's, uh, Dompe knocks off points for his attitude, and once the threat of disqualification comes up, he, he calms down. Um, but, yeah, the fight starts, um... Joe can't hit Aoyama at all, but then eventually, after enough uh, punishment, he takes an actual guard stance, um, <laughs> and he starts using his feet, and yeah, he, he's actually like, um, and then once once he starts doing that, he's able to corner Aoyama and um, land hits, and 
at that point, like Aoyama, you know, he uh, like he hadn't been hit before, so he's now he becomes fearful and helpless, basically. Um, so like, like because you know, Tonga or Dompe did say like earlier on, oh, everyone can box, and he gave um, Aoyama this chance, but you know, obviously he's still very like raw as a boxer and ultimately too fearful to do it. You know, like um, where you know where, where one recurring thing, like yeah, I guess, and I guess with this moment in particular is like yeah, you have to be. Um, to go towards tomorrow, like yeah, the, in this case, you have to be prepared to um, potentially get you know get hurt, and Aoyama isn't, so he's fearful. So yeah, Joe ends up winning, and then yeah, Tange or Danpei explains um, what you know why he why he did what he did to train Joe and or to help Joe in the end, which uh, of course worked uh, completely. Though he does apologize because uh, he was being manipulative. Yeah, it's definitely a. A conflict that is like, you know, it's, it's a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, it's, it's, it's a messy way of, kind of, cause he even admits to, he even admits that like, you know, he's not a very good trainer. So he kind of had to take a less than, um, you know, like he had to manipulate Joe and, uh, I mean, he really, Joe had to kind of like go through this personal hell, uh, to even get to that point, like the isolation and everything. Um, so yeah, like it, it obviously wasn't like the best way to train Joe, but also, you know, for what, for what Don Pei was kind of capable of doing, um, you know, he even said that like, he's not a great coach. So it, you know, it, it's, I can't think of the word yeah. I'm looking for, well, but yeah. No. Cause like, it, cause like it, like, yeah, it, it's 100% manipulative, but then there's also like, like, it's also kind of accepted in the end. Like, yeah, Don Pei is, you know, laments over it and, you know, comments on how like, yeah, he's not that good. And Joe, but Joe, like. Um, well, yeah, because it's also very much like it works with the personalities that the characters have. Like Joe is someone who he's like, yeah, you're right. I wouldn't have really, um, you know, like learned the defensive techniques. Like he would have just been like, I don't need this. Um, and then for Aoyama, you know, he was able to kind of he might have been used as kind of like Dompe's puppet in this scenario to kind of teach his lesson yeah. to Joe. But he also was able to learn like a way to defend himself and so he gained yeah, he more confidence in that yes yeah. right and and i like how it resolves because joe's like like he picks up a stick and he starts going wild on a bush or something like that and then or no it's a haystack and then he's like he like grabs it and he's like hey i was always cursing you but i like like i'd like to applaud like he he joe like has matured a lot in these in, in, a, in a couple ways at least like he's still joe but he's also like like he, yeah, he's realized you know like what I did was wrong. Like he went through a, yeah a harsh ordeal with Dante, but um at the end of the day he recognizes that like you know this was probably for the like yeah um I wouldn't I wouldn't have been very receptive to like well what like he, he the way he was acting gave uh, Dante little other choice basically so um and you know the way he reacted afterwards didn't even like um. Yeah, it, it probably, you know, um, like, maybe Dompe uh, could have, like, when Joe bowed his knees, like, you know, at that point, he's he's being submissive in a way that's very un-Joe. Yeah. So, you, yeah, I, the argument definitely exists that Dompe could have went too far, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, at the same time, like, yeah, it, it was, yeah, it was a bit of mental stress for Joe, so not not great, but, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting, at the very least. Um, yeah, like, it's one of those things that, like, it works out in the end, but it's not necessarily, like, oh... You know, everybody did the right thing. You know, it's kind of like you're able to accept that, you know, like as a person. Re I mean, I don't know. I, I keep like having an idea in my head and then I'm like losing my train of thought of like how to voice it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, Joe bumps into Rikishi or Rikishi comes to him while training. And uh, Rikishi mentions that he won't be able to. Uh, uh, he has plans for next Sunday. So he's like he's like dismissing Joe. Um and they, 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 they scuffle for a bit before um, deciding to just put up the ring. Because, like, yeah, Rikishi's getting released, so he can't fight. Um, so they, they have to fight for real. Um, like, they have to fight now outside of the tournament, um, rather. Oh, yeah, and also, um, yeah, it starts raining. And um, and I guess it, it, it's interesting to... Because um, what Joe proposes is that, like, instead of fighting under this ring or in this ring under the rain, like, why don't we settle this professionally? Like, he's, he's not like, like, yeah, he, he's not just like, oh, I want to fight Rikishi. He's, he's looking for more than that, you know? Um, and, you know, th he's thinking about more about the tomorrow. Like, Rikishi's like, Rikishi's like, okay, let's settle this today. 
but you know joe joe's looking ahead and rikishi accepts that and they decide like yeah let's let, well uh, you know he he warns like you know oh dompe you, you don't have a very good impression of the pro boxing world so that might not happen um mm-hmm. but uh yeah, it, it resolves, like, yeah, it's left unresolved for now, so that they can, you know, settle it in a, a different way later. Um, which, again, like, Joe would definitely would not have done this, like, you know, um, before, so. Oh, yeah, and I guess Joe is also cheating with The Rock, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was also kind of interesting that, you know, he used The Rock because he mentions, um, you know, like, you know, in this sense, because, like, he was tired from fighting Aoyama, um, you know, he was willing to kind of, like, take a handicap, whereas before, he's like, no, I have to fight on the same level as Rikishi. I have to, you know, if Rikishi does something, then I'm going to do that, too. Um, you know, fighting without a helmet and, like, using the, the heavy gloves. But, like, here, he kind of, you know, he goes against that. It shows that, like, he's, he's changed because he's willing to use this handicap in this situation yeah well like because even says like i i don't want to like at the end of the day he doesn't want to lose so like I, you could also see it as kind of a contingency where it's like or maybe he even came up with the idea of doing pro like in the middle of it so that like they could have a fair fight later because like now yeah he is weakened and he's got the rock so it's like you know there's excuses either way if he loses oh i was weakened from fighting aoyama if rikishi loses oh well you you were using a rock so, but it's like, he's, you know, at the end of the day, like, he, yeah, he's, he's too prideful to lose, even if he has to cheat, but, um, you know, he, you know, by offering to postpone it, he, that, that, it kind of, yeah, it doesn't become a thing. And Rikishi, of course, like, I knew you're using the rock, like, later, so it's not like, you know, Joe doesn't get noticed, but, um, so yeah, it's, uh, and yeah, Dompe also, like, oh, if you, you if you're gonna win it, like, he, he, uh, because obviously winning at all costs doesn't actually go in boxing, <laughs> um, but uh, he be, he just beats the shadow and like I'll use this rock like he's uh, <laughs> not the best mentor <laughs> I guess. Um. I do also think this is kind of interesting, you know, kind of going off the point that I had said earlier, um, because where like before, um, a-, a lot of Joe's goals were very much like in the moment, like he does this thing and then he does this thing, and so like now that like with Rikishi going away and getting out of the prison, it's kind of like, you know, having that goal further in the distance it's you know at this point it's kind of more you know it's kind of better for joe because if he had beaten rikishi say here uh like where would he have gone from there like what would he have had next to like keep him he definitely seems like someone who has to have like something to to go uh, for yeah yeah because otherwise he just gets bored Mm -hmm. so it's an interesting way of like reflecting that through like the story uh structure so moving on um yeah, Rikishi gets released. He, you know, talks about how he's gonna go into boxing. He gives Joe some shit like, um, maybe next time you'll have the courage to fight me without rocks on your gloves. And <laughs> Joe's, you know, reasonably and rationally says, "You bastard! I'm going to beat you to death." <laughs> <laughs> like he's such a dick. It's almost endearing at times. Like <laughs> he's a little shit, Joe. God. But yeah, Rikishi Joes and or Rik- Rikishi Joes. I meant Joes. <laughs> what the hell? I'm broken. I'm broken. It's the translation. <laughs> but yeah, like now that Rikishi was gone, like Joes obviously like way stronger than everyone here. So like, cause yeah, he wins the tournament, and it's like okay, whatever. Like you know, he's he's not doing what he wants to do. So like they they talk about like he's just like he just kind of exists in the prison now without anything to go for. Like all he can do is wait, basically, mm-hmm. and. Like, the only time he like gets excited is when Rikishi is on TV. I think is when he because he wants to see the match, and uh, you know he's still doing his training and stuff. But uh, yeah, overall it's just he's just waiting. Um, but yeah, Rikishi wins his match. Um, you know, and Joe fin- then like you know it's noted that um, every like everyone else like Aoyama and Nishi already you know leaves before him because Joe tried to escape, uh, but he does eventually get out. And of course, he heckles everyone before he leaves. But um, I think that they're um, the guards, or yeah, was it the guards? Yeah, they kind of talk about it afterwards and how like, like once he's gone, everyone kinda, like loses their energy. So like, you know, he, even if, if antagonistic, he um, yeah, he was also this inspirational, you know, thing uh, guy to them in a sense. Even if it was, he's the heel for sure. But uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, it's not wholly a negative. Uh, so yeah, or he's not wholly negative. But anyway, back in that uh, district of Tokyo, um, 
Dante has built his gym. The kids are all super happy to see him. Um, I like the moment where Joe's like picking up a bunch of the kids and just like like uh, saying hello. And then I, the the biggest one, I think Taro is his name. Yeah, like <laughs> he like he he wants to be picked up too, but he's too big. So <laughs> Joe's like, nah. Like <laughs> it's just kind of cute because you know he's like, yeah, he's the biggest one. He was one of the ones that was like wanted to fight Joe the most, but now he's just like also happy to see him. So. But anyway, yeah, Joe looks around the gym. Um, Nishi has been there. Uh, he's also um, boxing. Um, everyone, like, well, basically the whole town comes to celebrate uh, Joe um, returning. Or just because there's a reason to celebrate. Um, and then it ends with, uh, like, oh, it's Joe's never had, uh, you know, been felt missed by so many people or felt so loved. And... <laughs> He was crying, and I'm like, oh, okay, I feel a little bit. Uh... bit. <laughs> yeah, like this this little shit um, has a has something resembling a home now. Like this, or even though he's an orphan, he's found a community to belong to. You know, he's found boxing has given him something. You know, um, so I thought that's why I thought that because I, I chose this ending point. I thought this was perfect, basically. Um, yeah, because yeah, there's kind of arc to it. He comes to the city or this this area, this district, and. You know, at, through trial and tribulation and being a jackass and figuring that out, he finds a home. And, uh, yeah, Joe. Um, so yeah, like I said, definitely the rockiest stretch. Uh, the translation didn't help. Um, like, I think there's a lot of good stuff here, though. Um, even if it's also a lot of setup. Um, how about you, Mathwiz? Because, uh, how did you feel overall? Yeah, I, um, I think it, you know, I really hate to say this because it's not like I don't like the the earlier stuff, but yeah, like it's it's really once it kind of gets into the the boxing stuff and it really kinds of find its its stride that things I think start to kind of pick up a little bit. I I think mm-hmm. just though in general, like I had I think I had more you know like a more enjoyable time discussing it than I did like actually reading it, and you know maybe that's part of the the translation being a little wonky. Um, or I don't know, me yeah. just kind of well, th- it being the first time I'm going through the story, so still kind of trying to figure things out as I go. Uh, yeah, like I d- there's a lot of like you know moments of good characterization and stuff, but um and some of it, like I was only picking up on certain things like now this third time I've gone through, you know, so like um you know, but uh, I, you know, so I, I definitely think it's interesting, but I, this is definitely not the best like like yeah, the, the start is the hardest part of Joe to get through, I think, and um. Yeah, so, but I definitely think, like, when it gets good, it gets really good. Uh, so we'll talk, but we'll talk about that. Uh, so next time, we'll, we're start, we're finishing volume five. So this one ended at uh, page 88. So just from 89 and to the end of volume nine. So um, there's, you know, that just happened to be a good end point. And then so the, that, the reading after that will start from volume, just from volume 10. So a shorter reading next time will probably just be a shorter podcast. Maybe one of the shortest episodes of the end show, period. But um, I'm looking forward to it regardless. So, um, yeah, thank you for listening, and we will see you next time.